they cut the animal down the back. They strip this belly skin off, and then they use the belly for the bags. In the fall of 2014, PETA investigated the crocodile and alligator skin trade in Zimbabwe and the United States. These animals are barbarically slaughtered to make the most expensive accessories for the luxury market, including the Hermes Birkin bag. Bish, that's not a Birkin. The look you thought was working. Is that ostrich or gator? Oh, that is not a Birkin. PETA's investigators traveled to Africa to expose how these luxury items are produced. This is Badenga, a massive factory farm in Zimbabwe, as well as a major supplier to an Hermes-owned tannery. We do 43,000 skins a year. So we're the biggest Nile producers in the world. And it's really a factory, isn't it? It takes the belly skins of three crocodiles to make a single Hermes Kelly bag, or just one Birkin bag. We supply a company in, in France called uh, Hermes. We have a single supply sort of arrangement with them, where they purchase every single skin of ours. How much do the uh, most expensive bags uh, sell for? The average belly bag Birkin, 37,000 euros. And so that's hugely expensive thing. In this video, a computer-generated alligator voiced by Pink tells us the true cost of one of these $40,000 bags. Hey, I paid a lot for this. Well, actually, I paid a lot more. Many people don't know that crocodiles and alligators are fascinating and intelligent animals. They are the first reptiles who have been recorded using tools to capture their prey. Mother alligators are devoted and caring parents who stand guard over their eggs for months, carry their hatchlings in their mouths, and stay with their babies for up to three years in the wild. Crocodiles have a range of more than two miles, but at Padenga, they are confined to crowded concrete pens. And while crocodiles in nature can live even longer than human beings, the fashion industry kills them in cold blood when they are just three years old. And what are they harvested of? What are they? Oh, about the slaughter is gruesome. So you put them on a table, and then you, you bend his nose down, and his, his spine comes close like that, and you plunge a scalpel into the spine. Then the spinal shock. Then you take, a, you know, like a, a whippy aerial on your car, and you plunge it down his spine. It takes the spine out completely right to the base of the tail. Then you take a, a, a rod with a a pointed end, you put the brain, then you can work with it. You know, you can skin him in the process. Because otherwise, the nerves and everything are you know, always pitching on the table. Badenga's director of operations claims that the facility now electrically stuns the crocodiles before slaughter. Previously, without yeah. the stunner, which was pandemonium. A PETA investigator also traveled to Texas to the Lone Star Alligator Farms. Lone Star is part owned by Padenga and is also a major supplier to an Hermes owned tannery. The belly skins of these young alligators are sent to France to become watch bands. Here, the manager of Lone Star refers to the animals as watch bands, as if they were already inanimate objects. They're called watch bands. Okay, okay. Uh, gators are classified as wood leather, and they're leather and useful. Okay. The size is called a watch band alligator. We'll go to France and we'll come back and we'll have to buy it for $2,000 as a watch band. Okay. It's not even something that lasts. It's not a watch band that lasts like one year, you gotta buy it. That's why it's just, it shows you that money to pull Here's how they killed alligators at Lone Star. Workers shot most alligators in the head with a captive bolt gun and sawed into the back of their necks with a box cutter to sever blood vessels. Some alligators survived in agony for several minutes. One day, when the captive bolt gun had been misplaced, the manager stabbed four conscious alligators with a knife, an apparent attempt to dislocate their cervical vertebrae as they struggled. He admitted knowing that alligators continue to live after cervical dislocation. A bird, being a bird, uh -huh. cervical uh, dislocation is satisfactory, but reptiles will continue to live. Experts confirm that the alligators do remain alive. When the gun malfunctioned on five different days, 
the manager instructed a worker to cut into more than 500 conscious alligators. This was a crude attempt to dislocate their cervical vertebrae. The worker was then told to shove a rod into animals' skulls to try to scramble their brains. The alligators at Lone Star were confined to dank, dark pits. Many of the animals had raw, damaged skin around their jaws and received no veterinary care. The PETA investigator working at this facility documented that the water in the pits was murky brown and smelled like putrid and rancid excrement. He wrote that there were times he struggled not to vomit. Workers had to feel around the fetid water with their feet and hands to try to catch the struggling alligators. With little or no safety equipment given to them, they often got bitten and injured. This is the dark underbelly of the luxury fashion industry. There's a big difference between fashion and luxury. Fashion is very fickle, whereas a Birkin is a Birkin is a Birkin. A Kelly is a Kelly is a Kelly. The only reason that you've been able to survive is that you tend it to the luxury market, and it is bulletproof. Help show Hermes that the crocodile and alligator skin market is not bulletproof, and that luxury should not equal cruelty. Visit PETA.org to take action, and please, only buy cruelty-free clothes and accessories. Thank you.